it's of this one. Um, again, it's just a binomial distribution question. There's a little bit extra at the bottom here that we'll talk about. Um, but for the first part, we've got binomial, and I'm going to show you um, a couple of ways of doing this, um, and a, a bit of a clever way of doing it on the Casio uh, graphic calculator here. So for the class whiz, um, it, it's just as, as the last video, but we're going to just talk through how you'd set this up. So Stuart rolls a biased dice four times. The probability of a six is one quarter. The ver uh, random variable t represents his, uh, the number of times that he actually gets a six. Construct a table given the probability distribution. So the first thing I want to talk about is for part A, is the model that I'm going to use here. So I'm actually going to use a binomial model with four as being my number of trials, because he rolls it four times, and 0 0.25 my probability of success, so the chance of getting a six. Why can I use a binomial distribution? Well, there are four conditions that need to be met. The first condition is it's a fixed number of trials. That's okay, because we've got four. The second condition is that it's a fixed probability of success each time. We're told the probability of a six is always one quarter. The third condition is that each of these um, events is independent. We're rolling four different dice, they don't affect each other, so it is independent. Uh, and the fourth condition has completely eluded me. The fourth condition, ah, uh, the fourth condition is that there's exactly two outcomes. So we've either got the probability of a six or not a six. So we've only got two outcomes. So it's the most, uh, it's the simplest condition that we've got to meet. So that one's also met. So because we meet all four of these, we can use a binomial distribution, which is what I'm going to do here. So the second thing that I want to think about is my table um, of my probability distribution. So in this table, make it big enough, I know at the top I've got my um, kind of outcomes that it could be, and at the bottom I'm going to kind of put my probabilities. So the problem is that my random variable is equal to the outcomes at the top. So when I roll these dice, the different outcomes that it could be, well, I could get zero sixes. I could get one. I could have two, I could have three, um, and I could have four. So there are all my different outcomes that could happen. Let's just hopefully split that. And then at the bottom, I just need to work out my probabilities. So you could do these manually, again, using the formula. I'm gonna use the calculator. And then I'm going to show you a quick way of doing it on the uh, graphic calculator. Remember last time, you can put it's exactly the same on these two. Um, I did show you how to use both of these. So we'll go menu into seven distribution. And I'm going to use PD because I want to work out each of these. I don't want a cumulative. I want to work out each of these. So number four. And then the list. So when it's zero, my number of trials was four. And my probability is 0.25. I just press equals, and that's on my first one. Uh, if you don't want it in decimal, press the S to D, and we can get fraction. So it's 81 over 256. And then again, I just go back, and I update this to one. Double tap equals. Again, I want it as a fraction. So it's 27 over 64. And I just keep repeating this process for all of the different numbers I've got. 27 over 128. Number three, three over 64, and then one over 256, I guess. So number four, yeah, one over 256. Um, and that's the first part of that table. Before I go on to B, I just want us to consider this again and look at what the cumulative frequency is doing here. So the cumulative distribution. So the CD, when I actually do that, what's actually happening here is it's adding together as we go here. So just like a, a cumulative frequency table, um, it's doing this for this distribution. So the first one, when it's zero, is simply the same as above it. And I'll show you these in calculator in a second. This next one, well, 27 over, two five, uh, over 64 is the same as 108 over 256. If I just times top and bottom there by four, 
81 plus 108 is 189. So this should be 189 over 256. Uh, again, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, the next one is 54 over 256. So if I have 54 to this, um, what would it be? It'd be two, oh, where have I got to? So I was adding 54, sorry. Um, so two, four, three. <laughs> Add in this one, um, well, three over uh, six four would be 12. So that'd be two, five, five over two, five, six. And then adding this one would be two, five, six over two, five, six, which is of course one. So this probability distribution, the cumulative part adds to one. Let's just double check that. So distribution into the CD. And I'm just gonna try three, just to show you that it gives this. So if I put three into there, it gives me 0.996 which is 255 over 256. So that's just adding it. It's not part of this question, or not yet anyway, but it's just adding those together. So that's one thing to recognize. In part B, it's asking us to um, go through and find when the probability of our random uh, variable is less than three. So just like before, the first thing we want to do here is to convert this to being less than or equal. So if it can't be three, the smallest number it can be is actually two. And we can actually pull this straight off of my chart here because I've worked this out. So it's gonna be two, four, three over two, five, six, because that's the cumulative. But again, on the calculator, we just want to put that in the C uh, D function and we'd put two in as our variable. So that's what our lesson equals is and just equals. So it's two, four, three over two, five, six. Again, we found it out just from adding together these first three. So that's the first bit. Um, how can we get clever using the, uh, if we've got the graphic calculator? Well, you can use what we call the, the list function on here. So if we're going to menu and stats, you can see we've got a list here. If I put in my outcomes on here, so zero, one, two, three, four, and then go to the distribution, so F5, I can actually tell it to do my binomial distribution. So I'm gonna do the PD to start with, and I want it to output in, um, so I'm, I want it to take in list one. And I'm going to ask it to actually save these values into list number two for me. So that's going to be my PD function. So this is just to save the result in list two. So I know there's, I want to take in list one, which is my different values, zero, one, two, three, four. There's four trials here, and my probability of success is 0.25. So if I press equals, that tells me what each of these are. Uh, and the other very clever thing is it's also saved. So that's what these are if you convert them to decimal. You can check that yourself. Uh, you might, might remember some of these numbers from when I was doing it. I can't actually convert using this button here, though. It doesn't allow me. If I just go exit, you'll see it's actually saved these next to it. So because I told it to save the result, I've actually got all those saved in here. And um, the other thing that I want to do is the same thing, but with CD, the cumulative. But this time, whoop. this time I actually want to take my list. Um, it's still list one, but I want to save it in list three. So I'm gonna save in list three this time, just so I don't overwrite. But then again, I'm just gonna press equals, but you can see here, it starts to add these up again and it gets to one at the end. If I go exit, and go back to my list. You can see here, all I've done is add these two numbers together, add this with this one, and add this with this one to get the desired kind of end result. Um, going through all of those, just lost the bottom of my calculator. There we go. Uh, just going through all of those gets me down to the summation of one. Um, so that's just what's, what's happened there. Okay, so for um, C, Let's just um, make a little bit of space here. Uh, I'm just going to move my calculator on top of each other. Let's do it. So for part C, it says he rolls the dice again, this time recording the number of required, uh, rolls required until he rolls a six. I'm just slightly different here. He stops when he rolls a six and he rolls the dice a maximum number of five times. The random variable S represents the number of times he rolls the dice. 
This one is worth three points again, but it's a, a very different table. So let's just do this up the top here. So part C. Uh, for this one, let's call it S because that's what we're told here. So I've got little s. Uh, let's think about how many times he rolls a dice. So remember this time, the random variable s is the number of times he rolls a dice. So if he rolls a dice the first time and he gets a six, he'll stop rolling. If he rolls it a second time, that must have meant that he failed on the first time. And that meant him, ro him rolling it again. So the minimum number of times he can roll this is one. The maximum number of times is given in the question, which is five. So we need a distribution that includes all of these. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's my different outcomes here. Just do a bit of an open table. And at the bottom, we've got the probability of big S equaling little s. Um, so the probability for, for a one, the probability that he rolls and gets a one, uh, sorry, and he only needs one, is he must get a six the first time. So the probability that he only rolls once is the same as him getting a six on that first time. So the probability of six, we're told, is one quarter. So that's the very first one, nice and easy. So this isn't binomial at this point, which is what we've got to keep in mind. So the probability of him needing two rolls is on the first roll, he doesn't get a six, and then he does get a six. So on the first roll, he doesn't get a six, that's three out of four times by on the second row he does so that's one out of four and um, so here we get three over 16 and we just want to keep going through this notion notion so this isn't the same as a um binomial distribution this is a regular um distribution here and uh, so probably a distribution a bit more thought probably getting three rolls um well he must have got a six in the first row and then a, uh, sorry, not a six in the first roll, and then not a six on the second roll, and then finally must have landed a six to stop rolling. So that's going to be three quarters times three quarters times by uh, one quarter. So this time, four times four times four, 64 for the bottom. And then I've got three times three times one at the top, which is going to give me nine. Uh, for four, let's just update the little bits I need here. So for four rolls, it's not a six, not a six, not a six. And then finally we do get six. So four times four times four times four, uh, gives me 256 at the bottom. And then three times three times three times one, gives me 27 at the top. You might be able to see a pattern here. One, three, nine, 27. Probably guess the last one's 81. Um, but we'll wait and see for that. There might be a little bit of a trick for that. So for five, Five is actually the trick here. Um, for five rolls, we could not get a six, not get a six, not get a six, not get a six, and then roll a six. Or, and this is very important, we might just not get a six at all. So we could just get all not sixes. So this is um, quite a big kind of difference for this last one. And um, so we either do get a six, but remember if we if we roll no sixes five times in a row, we still stop rolling. So for this top one, we've got three times three times three times three times one. That's 81. And then for the bottom number, we've got four times four times four times four times four, times four uh, which is 1,024. So very different to what I thought this would be, maybe, maybe not actually. Um, and then this bottom one, three times three times three times three times three, which is 243. And then the bottom number is going to be four times four times four times four times four. So again, just writing those out. I know I've not done that, but um, if you write them out, you'll, you'll get these answers. If I put that into my calculator, so 81 plus 243, and I want that to be out of 1024. So it should simplify a little bit. There we go. So it's going to be 81 out of 256. If I add together all of these, I should find out it equals one. So 0 0.25 plus 316. I'll just keep going through, so it's going to take me just a second. Nine over 64. Um, 27 over 256. I 
could really combine these last two just to make it a bit faster, um, just because they're both over 256. But that should give me one, which it does. So that's the last little bit of that, that bottom part. Uh, the final part of this question is part D. So just kind of come to this side. Sorry, I'm trying to avoid my calculators. Find the probability that S is bigger than two. It can't be equal to two. So again, we're just using a bit of logic to work this out. So S needs to be greater than two. So numbers bigger than two here, three, four, and five. Um, several ways of doing this, you just simply add these up. You could do one minus these two, um, whichever one, but you just know that that needs to be three, four, and five added together. So I'm going to do one take away three sixteenths and then minus 0.25. So that's everything. Uh, take away um, these kind of first two because I don't want those. So that gives me nine over 16. And that's how we do that question. Um, yeah, if you need anything else, just let me know um, in the comments, wherever else, um, and I will try and help.